Does anyone remember the Only Hearts Club dolls? I distinctly remember them being sold in Target in the early 2000s and I was obsessed with them. My mom bought me and my sister one, I believe. I got the one with brown hair, she got the one with red hair, of course. Later on, I begged my mom to let me buy another one with my birthday money, and that was the day little baby me discovered U.S. sales tax. The doll was around $16 to purchase new, but after ringing it up, the total was closer to like $18, and little me was shook. I remember later that day, I wrote a huge rant in my diary saying something like I was scammed and they lied to me or something. Unfortunately, I don't have that diary anymore, but it still tickles me to think about how angry I was. Anyway, I loved those dolls, and me and my sister would play with them together all the time, so what on earth happened to them? They were certainly high quality enough to go places, they had tons of outfits, pets, and some cute play sets, but I've seen basically nothing about them past my childhood. Not until I looked for them on eBay on a whim and I remembered just how much I adored them. Well, I'm gonna dive into the very short rise and fall of these dolls and try to find out where they are now. These are the Only Hearts Club. The Only Hearts Club dolls were created by Ruben Terzian sometime before 2004. He was retired at the time, being in his 60s, and had designed dolls for Mattel and Hasbro as well as other toys for the company he co-founded called Big Monster Toys, which included gems like this adorable rattlesnake Jake toy, um, no relation to the Rango movie, of course. To paraphrase what most articles said about the dolls, they were intended as a sort of anti-Barbie. They were meant to appeal to the moms who were fed up with the sexy, sultry Barbie and Bratz dolls who were corrupting their sweet angels, and in my Christian homeschooled house, that was just the right kind of doll to end up in my possession. To quote an article in ToyDirectory.com, written by Elizabeth Greenspan, They have bodies and clothes like real girls, and each one has an interest and a personality. One girl's a ballerina, another loves animals, etc. They do things like go horseback riding or have slumber parties, the things that real girls do. Which, of course, I think is perfectly fine and really cute, but let's not act like we didn't completely ignore all that as a kid and just made up our own stories and personalities for our dolls. Like, I'm pretty sure I immediately forgot my girl's name and just pretended she was me. Hi, I'm Terry Macaron, Director of Sales at Only Hearts Club. Welcome to our show booth. And what I want to show you today are our Only Hearts Club dolls. We have a group of six girls, but we have two new additions to our doll line. We have a new African-American doll here on our right, and then we have a new Asian-American doll. So now our club girls consist of eight girls. The dolls did incredibly well at toy shows and were sold at specialty stores for only a couple of years, quoting Elizabeth Greenspan's article again. The response was beyond what we expected and it was hard to keep up with demand. We shipped some stuff late. It was a good problem to have. We figured it out and caught up. In 2006, the girls made it to Target shelves and were accessible to a broader base of children, including little me. That was pretty much their heyday. Oh dear, I hear a child screaming my name, so we'll get to this later. There were six girls originally, two more added later. The six original girls are Anna Sophia, Brianna Joy, Karina Grace, Lily Rose, Olivia Hope, and Taylor Angelique. Later, two more were added, their names are Kayla Ray and Hannah Faith, and as of today, they stand as the most difficult to find secondhand. I haven't even been able to find any Hannahs anywhere, in any condition, and it's even more difficult to find many photos of her, aside from a sold listing for like 45 bucks. Kayla Ray pops up slightly more often, and I was able to find two of her listed on eBay recently for around $100, which, uh, I'm not exactly willing to pay. I do not own either of them yet, unfortunately, but I do think they're both lovely. I just hope they all ended up in black hole collections to be loved forever. Each of the girls had a little description of their personalities on the backs of their boxes, and for this, I would like to thank Jen from Jen Joy's All Dolled Up page for allowing me to use these next few photos, as they're extremely hard to find online. I will link her blog post about the dolls in the description. She has some incredibly rare photos of most of the items that were sold separately from the dolls as well, but I will mention those later on. For now, I'm going to briefly summarize each of the girls' personalities, so if you don't care about that, much like youngster me didn't care, feel free to skip ahead. I apologize if some of this is uh, messed up. I'm trying to read off of this very pixelated uh, photo, but I will uh, try my best. Anna Sophia is a culinary wizard. The spatula is her magic wand. She's creative, eager, and curious, the perfect mix of ingredients for cooking up fun. Anna's creativity also sometimes distracts her and takes her out of the frying pan and into the fire. Personally, Anna Sophia is my favorite. 
Brianna Joy lives for the heart-pumping action of sports. She's an all-around athlete who's bright, energetic, and competitive. While Brianna's competitiveness makes her a natural leader, she must find ways to make sure she also wins in the game of life. Music and dance move Karina Grace's soul. She is ambitious, dedicated, and confident that she will achieve her big dreams. Sometimes, however, Karina's focus on those dreams and impatience with her others can make her seem like a prime ballerina. I genuinely... I, I, I don't know. I can't read that. It's so pixelated. Lily Rose is as natural as they come. She's very friendly, outgoing, and is a thrill seeker who feels most at home outdoors, surrounded by nature. Sometimes she wanders a bit too far and her adventures land her in predicaments as wild as a ride on the rapids. The most comfortable spot in the world for Olivia Hope is the shiny leather saddle atop her favorite golden brown horse, Missy. Olivia is gentle, kind, and giving. Despite this, she somehow seems to have a way of landing in a heap of trouble as high as a haystack. Taylor Angelique is an animal lover and enjoys going to the dog park with her friends. She can be headstrong, but her caring nature and quick wit make her the life of the party. At times, however, her act first, think later tendencies land her in the doghouse. Taylor Angelique is also one of my favorites. Now that you know the girls, let's talk about their actual structure. They're pretty uniquely made, utilizing both a plush body and vinyl parts. Their heads, hands, and later on the feet are vinyl, while their bodies are plush with some sewn details like leg and arm shape and a belly button. The wires inside the arms and legs are great for posing them in basically any pose you can think of. They can cross their arms, cross their legs, and even hold neck positions, since the wires go into their heads as well. They don't hold poses the best, like the wires aren't as strong as I'd like, but they're easy to bend for a child and that's probably more what they were going for. Their early dolls had these little fabric nub feet, then sometime later they switched to vinyl feet for them. This Karina Grace is from 2010 and has vinyl feet, while my other Karina Grace from 2004 has the nubs. Now I could gush about these dolls hairs for ages, but let me calm down and just say it is the softest, shiniest hair I've seen on any dolls to date. I do not know what it is. I'm not really a doll person. I'm a fraud. But like, if you recognize what type of faux hair this is, let me know. It is gorgeous and it aged amazingly. It brushes out really well with any brush. And although it's not rooted the best, it's thick enough to hide bald spots. Taylor Angelique, as well as most of the other girls, even have streaks of varying shades in the hair to give it depth. I just adore it and I can't believe I chopped off this beautiful hair when I had these dolls as a child because of course I did. I think it's important to point out just how varied and intricate their outfits and accessories were. They came in a set of meat clothes tailored to each girl's personality, with the outdoorsy girl wearing jeans and a sun hat, the dancer girl wearing tights and a skirt, etc. Additional outfits called ready to wear were available separately and ranged from different types of bathing suits to cooking attire to sleepwear to horse riding gear to frilly princess gowns and more. One of the girls I bought new in box came with this fashion photo album, but even this doesn't show all of the outfits you could buy for them. There were so many. These outfits were so detailed and well made, and I don't see much like them on shelves anymore. Although, as I said, I'm not a doll collector really, so there could be some really nice ones I don't know of. I know Rainbow High is pretty detailed. My kids are awake, so there might be some sounds in the background, but I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna make this section very brief since I don't own enough of the books to do a full dive into them, but I imagine they're all similarly structured. The two I own are Teamwork Works and Two Smart Cookies, which are about Brianna Joy and Anna Sophia, respectively. They are, um, not written for me, obviously. I like to think of myself as a bit of a reader, but it took me three days to get through these because they're so utterly boring. They are written in the most bland, easy to digest way, which makes sense. They are literally for children. The first book is about Brianna learning to be a good sport with her friends on a soccer team, which is strike one against my reading enjoyment since I don't enjoy sports. She does exactly what you expect in a teamwork story arc. She takes a teammate's uniform because she wants to wear number one. She hogs the ball, shoves her teammate over to score the winning goal, and doesn't see what she did wrong since they won. She goes home and brags to her family after a random line where we learn her dad is an architect. It does not come up again. She thinks all her friends are losers who suck at the game and she alone can carry the team. They tell her she's being a stinky jerk and she reluctantly agrees to be a better friend. They go to play another game. Brianna again hogs the ball until she falls and twists her ankle. 
Her friends continue the game without her, and surprise, they can play just fine without her. She realizes she was being a jerk, and cheers for them from the bench. They win, and all hug and are friends again. The second book I have is about Anna Sophia entering a baking competition. This one was a little more tolerable to read since Anna Sophia is one of my favorite girls and I like food. Anna's Nana is visiting from Mexico, so in her excitement, she and her friend Olivia bake a chocolate pecan pie and dance in the kitchen. They enter the baking contest and make another chocolate pecan pie to bring. However, when they leave it on the picnic table to cool, their dogs Sniff and Bubalina, <laughs> which is a wild name, eat it all up. Now, you might think the conflict of the story is that they miss out on the contest because they now need to rush their pets to the vet because both chocolate and pecans are toxic to dogs. But no, you'd be wrong. Nana walks in the door for her visit, and ignoring the dogs completely, Anna immediately asks her to bake something for them. She has a sneaky little plan to get Nana to bake something that they can take to the contest. They rush to the bake-off, feeling a little guilty. They enter the cookies, and of course they win, as expected and feel bad about lying, so they spill the truth and are disqualified. I was surprised by the ending because the judge then decides out of the blue that Nana is the winner after all, even though she didn't enter. Uh, she's happy about it and I thought that was a little cute. She says she's proud of Anna for telling the truth after all, and that's the end. These books are written in the corporate bland style of a moral storybook. Someone was held at gunpoint to write for the company. There isn't even an author credited, so I like to imagine they just pulled someone from marketing, told them to write these books within a week, and gave them an obligatory list of morals to tie into them. The only upside to owning the books, in my opinion, is getting to see all the cute pose photos included inside. They're so charming to look through, especially in the cookie story with all the tiny ingredients and cooking supplies set up. If I were a more dedicated collector, I would probably have them all, but I don't feel like hunting them all down just yet. Each girl came with a pet, depending on which box you purchased them in. I believe the pets came in the boxes with their meat outfits, however, I have seen the girls sold in their meat outfits without their pets as well, so I'm not sure. I have all of the dogs, aside from Olivia's dog Sniff. In the order shown, the dogs are Brianna Joy's wiener dog Longfellow, Taylor Angelique's Beagle Patches, Karina Grace's Dalmatian.com, Anna Sophia's Cocker Spaniel Bubalina, and Lily Rose's Dog Cupcake. I also have this little cat, but I don't think it has a name. It came with the veterinarian ready-to-wear clothing set. It's pretty goofy looking, but I like to pretend it's a toy for the dolls rather than an actual cat. The other pets I am missing are Hannah's cat Lulu and Kayla Ray's cat Spanky, for obvious reasons. Figures that the two girls with cats are also the hardest to obtain. Besides the dogs and cats, the other pets you could buy for the dolls were the horses. There were quite a few horses to choose from, including a purple horse and a couple of unicorns. Each horse had its smaller version for the little sister dolls. Oh, what? I haven't mentioned little sisters yet? Hmm. We'll get to them later. I never had the horses growing up, which is crazy considering I was a huge horse girl, but I do currently own one that I found at Goodwill. It is Cookies and Cream. Finding their names was a pain in the butt. Seriously, no one has documented anything about these horses, so the only way to find their names is to find a photo of the back of their boxes. I scoured resale sites for a while to find anyone who posted the backs of the boxes as well as the front. I did finally find one. I tried to match up the adult and full counterparts the best I could. They all seem to have matchy theme names, so it's not difficult to imagine who goes with who. There is Missy and Bissy, the chestnut mare and foal. Cinnamon and Cutie Pie, the Palomino quarter horses. Starlight and Star Bright, the White Arabians, Sugar and Spice and Sugar Cube, the Pintos, Chance and Coco, the Holsteiners, Cookies and Cream and Chocolate Chip, the Appaloosas, and lastly, Midnight and Sweet Dreams, the Black Morgans. Oh wait, that's not all of them? Crap, they really leaned into the horse girl thing, didn't they? Now that I've caught my breath, I'll list the Shetland Pony counterparts. I thought the smaller horses were for the Little Sisters, but I guess they were just for fun and actually the Shetland ponies are meant for the Little Sisters to ride. The ponies came in the same color options as the other horses and with similarly themed names. They are Salt and Pepper the Appaloosa, Night Night the Black Pony, Caramel the Palomino, Houston the Pinto, and Tootsie the Brown Pony. There doesn't seem to be a counterpart for the White Arabian Big Horses. I did search around, but I couldn't find a white pony, so I guess there are only five ponies. There are unrealistically colored ones as well, and they are Majesty the Purple Horse and Mystique the White Unicorn. There are mini unicorns in six different colors for the Little Sisters, but they don't have any names and are referred to by their color. Anyway, I spent an absurdly long time trying to find all those horse names, so let's move on to talking about the actual accessories. 
The biggest accessories you could purchase for the girls were the room play sets. There was a ballet studio with seats and a club room. My sister and I had the club room, um, twice. It was made of cardboard with gloss paper over it, so it was not very sturdy, and we were not very careful children. Pretty sure we found it at the thrift store the second time, though. Even bigger was the stable and tack room playset, which I would have loved as a child, but like I said, I never had the horses, so I missed out on those. There were smaller sets called Ready to Play, which included sleeping bags and stuffed animals. The sleeping bag sets came in big girl and little sister sizes. There was a sleeper sofa that came in pink and purple and green and purple, and a matching chair and ottoman that also came in both colors. I own the green chair, missing the ottoman. It's super cute for displaying the dolls in a more casual way, and the construction is great for such an old toy. I also own the matching sleeper sofa. I was so excited to get this sofa. I'd been searching for one for a while, but with no luck, until I found this listing. In one of the listing photos, which showed the ottoman I needed, I noticed a sneaky little sleeper sofa in the background. Forgetting the ottoman, I immediately reached out to the seller to ask about the sofa, even though it wasn't included in the listing description, and they got right back to me. Turns out they had two of the sofas, but didn't bother listing them. After a brief back and forth, they agreed to list one of the sofas separately and for a pretty graciously low price, so now I have one for my collection. Still missing the ottoman, though. There is a pretty beach chair setup that I almost bought, but I couldn't find a place for them in my current setup, plus they were a little expensive. There was a patio furniture set that I've literally never seen anywhere for sale outside of this catalog photo, but it is really pretty. Outside of the ready-to-wear sets, there were a few smaller fashion packs with shoes, hats, and purses or bags. Lastly, there were dog bed sets, with a bed, a toy, and a blanket. I never saw these other sets, so I'm not sure where these were available. A lot of sets and clothing variations seem to have been Australia exclusives. The only pet bed I see pop up for sale is the cupcake bed and book set. Pardon the noise, this is editing me here. Uh, I, I just realized I totally forgot to talk about the carrying case, which is crazy because I was so excited to talk about it. Uh, anyways, uh, this is off script, so I'm going to sound a little weird. But this carrying case, it's super cool. You could fit like six dolls in it, I believe, and a whole bunch of accessories fit inside because it's pretty big. But anyway, it's a funny story how I got it. It was on eBay on auction. So I messaged a seller and offered maybe like five, ten dollars more than they were asking for. But they told me they wanted to wait out the auction because they were sure they could get more money for it. I waited out the auction and of course I was the only one who bid so I got it for like way, way less than I offered to them. So I thought it was pretty funny but anyway, I really like the bag. I think it's super pretty and very, very early 2000s. Last of all were the Little Sisters. No, they're not technically the last of the Only Hearts Club products, but I literally cannot go into the So Small Pets in this video or it will be a hundred years long. Maybe another time. The Little Sisters were the, duh, Little Sisters of the Only Hearts Club girls. I don't have a ton to say about them since they weren't my favorite. They had the same wire articulation as the Big Sisters, but they had permanent clothing sewn as their bodies. You were able to purchase outfits for the Little Sisters, but like what's the point if you could still see their perma outfits underneath? Okay, I'm gonna be nice. They are really cute and small. I did have fun playing with them, maybe even more so than the big sisters since they could fit in your pocket. My sister and I used to pretend they were borrowers and make them climb all around the house. The little kids each matched a big girl, and I just realized I've been calling them little sisters this whole time, but they're actually called the little kids because there's one little brother as well. He's the only boy in the Only Hearts Club line, actually. The little kids are Christy, Olivia's little sister, Trevor, Taylor's little brother, Sydney, Kayla Ray's little sister, Melody, Karina's little sister, Chelsea, Hannah's little sister, and Jessica, Lily's little sister. They don't seem to have any personality descriptions that I could find. The back of their box simply says they are so small and so cute and love spending time with their older siblings, having fun and getting into mischief. They had their own fun play sets to buy too, including a bathtub with a curtain, a bathroom sink with toothbrush, and the aforementioned little sleeping bags, and even their own little kids club room. There were princess variations of all the little kids, just like the big sisters. Now I know I haven't talked about the mermaid and princess line or the rock and roll line either for that matter, but I just I don't care enough to get into those, and there's not much to say about them either. It's just a line of fashion for the girls to pretend to be princesses and rock and roll stars. That's it. Anyway, with that out of the way, we've basically covered everything about the dolls, creation, and the Playline products, so let's jump online. If you've looked at any of the Only Hearts Club boxes, you might have noticed a URL on all of them, leading you to OnlyHeartsClub.com. The mini magazines you get with the dolls will prompt you to come join the club and become a member on the website. 
Now, if you go to this URL currently, you will find a sad, barren site with only a few baby dolls shown, but not actually available to purchase. Most of the links lead to empty pages with the promise that something is coming soon. No blog, no dogs, and certainly no Only Hearts Club girls. But if you hop on the Wayback Machine, you will find the site looking a lot more colorful and alive with sparkly link buttons and bright photos of the dolls and accessories. For this part, I couldn't get my screen recording software to work, so bear with me as I struggle to hold my phone for 10 minutes to record the site. Clicking on the dolls link will take you to a slideshow of all the dolls and a description. Unfortunately, a lot of the photos are broken, but you can still see how pretty and interactive the site used to be. Clicking on the outfits link takes you to a page where I assume you used to be able to find and purchase most of the outfits, but sadly none of the photos worked on this page, so I just clicked around for a bit before moving on. The join the club link takes you to a page where you would have been able to fill out your information and address in order to receive a club kit, which would include an official Only Hearts Club membership card, a bookmark, and one of the books. It's unclear whether this cost money or was a complimentary type thing, since in order to even know or care about the club, the person joining would likely have already bought some of the dolls. There's a link that says watch the girls, which I can only assume included a promo video, however, the flash file does not work anymore. You can see the horse and pony club on another page. The horse club is not separate from the Only Hearts Club, it's just a page to view the horse products. After this, I scrolled around for a minute trying to get the playsets page to load. Eventually it did, and of course none of the photos work. There's another video link in the top corner, and that one also doesn't work because of Flash. Makes me a bit sad that I missed out on the site's heyday. Should have been joining the Only Hearts Club as a child instead of wasting all my time on DeviantArt. A few years later, they updated the site, and there's a really fun interactive catalog on this version. Very nice to look through. Looking through the Wayback Machine's archive history, it looks like the site stopped being active, or at least wasn't archived past 2014, which leads me to believe that's when the dolls were discontinued. From 2020 on, the site is listed as belonging to Ovation Holdings, not Only Hearts Club Group LLC. So I'm not sure if the dolls were sold to Ovation sometime after 2014, or if they just changed the name. OHC Group LLC is listed as being based in California, while Ovation Holdings is based in Hong Kong. Which is what leads me to believe the dolls were taken over by a different company. Skipping ahead to June 2021 reveals that at some point, new versions of the girls were listed as products on the revamped site, and they were actually listed on the site until around March 2023 when they disappeared, leaving only a few baby dolls and a desolate site in their wake. Now, I will show you these new doll designs in just a minute, but for now, let me wrap up this website section by rolling back to the beautiful old site and scrolling through these delightful testimonials from customers. I'm not going to read them all, but I would like to point out the absolute gall of the person who wrote, your books are wonderfully written. I'm sorry, but whoever that was, we have some beef. I'd recommend pausing to read or looking at them through the Wayback Machine, as some are pretty funny, judgmental, or just cute, depending on which ones you read. In early 2021, after seven long years of silence, the Only Hearts Club made a reappearance. They popped up with zero fanfare, exactly the way they vanished. And Only Hearts Club official Facebook, as well as an official Instagram, were created in February of 2021 and quickly added a profile pic, a cover image, and several photos, all the same across accounts. And there they were, without so much as a warning, a countdown, or even cheers from waiting fans, the brand new Only Hearts Club girls dropped. The same high quality and care is clear from these photos. The girls are posed with less articulation than before. They are wearing detailed and pretty outfits, almost identical to their originals. Their dogs seem to be replaced with an animal plush instead, which is definitely a downgrade in my opinion. Look, I know it says they're soft pets, but I know that pink bunny is not a live bunny in their universe. I think these versions look just as cute and beautiful as the originals, but in their own way. They were certainly skewing a bit more American Girl than Barbie adjacent this time, which would have set them up for steep competition, but maybe they still could have been a more budget-friendly option. Kind of like our generation dolls are. Anyway, these were most likely prototype images, so the released doll might not have even looked as nice. But none of that matters, since it seems they were never released. Jumping back to the website, the dolls were on the site for a few years as I said before, but they were not available to buy, at least not online. I have extensively googled every variation of Ovation Holdings New Only Hearts Club doll 2021-2023 and have come up completely empty-handed. 
On their Facebook and Instagram, they announced that they would be showcasing at some 2021 spring toy fairs in China, but looking up the toy fairs, I was unable to find any evidence that the to dolls were there. The sites have no results for Only Hearts Club, and as far as I can find, they don't even have any info for the year 2021 at all. On one of their Facebook posts, there is a link to their newsletter, which of course I subscribe to immediately. On the page, it claims, we are back, with the hopeful message, <clears throat> Dearest fans, I hope you still have not forget us, Only Hearts Club. We are coming back to the market now. Thank you so much for your support in the past. Only Hearts Club will remain focused on providing high-quality, wholesome, age-appropriate products with great play value. This year, we're not only retaining for some of the previous products, continue to offer high-quality dolls, we also manufacturing protective face masks, pets, toys, and outfits, and kid products. There will be more developments within Only Hearts Club in the coming years. Please share your brilliant ideas with us and spread the news of our returning with your friends. Follow us on the Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest news. Stay tuned. I just, I feel sad that no one cared about their return. Their Facebook only has 89 followers and barely any engagement. Their Insta has less followers than I do, which is wild considering I have less than 100. However, the last post the accounts have made is this Christmas post from December 2023, which was not super long ago, so I'm holding out hope that maybe they will return with more info in the coming year. I did try to reach out to them via comments, messages, and email, but so far no response. I suppose I'll have no choice but to make an update video if they ever respond, offering to send me the prototype dolls to test out. But that's all I have on Only Hearts Club dolls for now. Sometimes it's not with a bang that a toy or product disappears. It's simply that they reach their peak and quietly drop off into obscurity. It's easy for me to sit here and say the dolls were amazing and deserved so much more love, but I can't go back in time and make sales high enough to keep the line going, or make hype high enough on my own to prompt the company to release the new dolls. In the meantime, I suppose I can just enjoy the dolls I have and save for the good memories I had with them. If you actually watched this video to the end, thank you! It took me over a month to research and edit since I was literally teaching myself how to edit along the way. I've never made a video like this before. Um, I usually only animate like once a year and post that, but this was really fun to make. It was a passion project from start to end and I really just wanted to share how much I love these obscure dolls and it really seems like there's no one talking about them. I love to watch videos like this so I figured why not make another one to add to the pile. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video info dump slash essay, and maybe I'll make like the Only Hearts Club girls and reappear in a few years to post another video. Anyways, bye.